What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Losers Lounge podcast, and ladies and gentlemen, I am finally back. I've been absent the last two episodes, but I'm glad to be here again. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Losers Lounge podcast episode number 10. How great is that? The perfect 10. Yeah. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. 10. Sorry. Which also means, ladies and gentlemen, our friend Rice Ryan here made history. He's the only guy to appear in all 10 episodes. Ryan, how you doing? Doing good, man. How are y'all? Del- delivers a golf ball clap. It's a perfect 10 for me. I am very honored to have a perfect street 10 and 0. So, Quit bragging. Uh, Quit yeah, bragging. Uh, drink it in. I know y'all are hating right now. I'm glad that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Drink it <laughs> in, man. All right. I am salty. I'm salty. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Ryan uh, has been in all episodes. Willie and Kels have each been absent for one episode, but I've been absent for three. So if there's anybody who should be complaining, it's me. This is like, on my channel too, so I don't know. That anyway, very true. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, today's topic is the NXT Brooklyn trilogy because coming up in a couple of weeks, uh, actually in a week and a half, we have NXT Takeover Brooklyn Four, which the losers' Lounge will get to next week. Once again, minus me. But that's okay. Because this time, we're here to talk about the NXT Brooklyn Trilogy. But before we get to that, I'd like to introduce a brand new segment to the show, which we call, It's Q&A Time with the Losers Lounge. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah! It's gonna be good. Each one of us has selected a question from, the, from our fans, from the Twitter page, and we're going to answer them right now, and whoever... Ask the question. We're giving them a shout out on the podcast, which means you guys can answer, ask questions in the comments section below right now if you want to, and you may end up being on a future video. All right. So here's how things are gonna start. I'll I'll actually go first. How this is gonna work is I we all selected a question. I'm gonna ask the first one, uh, but each one of us is gonna individually answer it. So here we go. My, the question here. Is from a Twitter user named Harry Flint at D A Harris here. That's a very interesting name. Um, the question is, which would happen first? First ever gay WWE World Champion or first ever autistic WWE World Champion? And that's a very interesting question. Uh, first of all, Harry Flint. That's an interesting name. I, that sounds familiar. Where have I heard that from? Huh. Not sure. Anyway. Well, who first ever gay world champ, first ever autistic world champ? I don't think that's a really hard one to guess because um, we've had a few gay wrestlers in WWE, but I don't think any of them has been world champ. And we, I don't have we hey guys, have we ever had an autistic WWE superstar? No, I don't think so. I mean, you maybe Eugene. You could kind of count Eugene as autistic, but was he legit autistic maybe? though? No, no. I don't think there's ever been a legit autistic world champion All right. in WWE. All right, how about this? What if I debuted in WWE? I'm already autistic, but what if I came out as gay and became world champion? I would support you. Good. And be happy. Hey, I, would, I would be the first ever for both those categories then. <laughs> um, but, Willie, what do you think? First, Who do you think would be first, a gay world champ or an autistic world champ? Well... I bet y'all guys did not know this about me, but I am also autistic. Yeah, I probably don't show it, but I am actually. But as Christian said, um, the first ever autistic world champion. Um, I don't know. That's that is actually a hard question, but I don't know. Heck, I might be the first. You never know. Or Christian, I don't know. And the first ever gay world champion. Finn Balor? I don't know. Is no. Finn Balor no. count? Balor just represents the LGBT. <laughs> Um, I don't know. It's gonna. Ha- it, it probably won't happen. No, in this company, but you know, mm. never, never in professional wrestling. All right. Well, Kelsey, what about you? What do you think's gonna happen first? The first ever gay world champ or autistic world champ? Probably the first gay world champ. Honestly, I could see. Honestly, I know the company is. You know, but if the company was so mad about it, they wouldn't let Finn. You know do what he's been like you know you know what i mean like yeah if they wouldn't let him wear rainbow shirts or anything oh, yeah, so definitely. so I'm i so feel proud like of him. i feel like they'd let like, they i feel like they'd let a gay world champion happen like yeah you know what I'm, 
that that probably be my answer too. That probably would work. And Ryan, what about you? Uh, to be honest, I would probably have to say probably first gay world champion. Um, I really don't know anybody that like ever been like like, like autistic or anything, or that probably will. But I would probably, I mean, you know, the Dota V like with Sonya Deville and Finn Balor, like they represent the LGBT. So uh, I think yeah, we love them for that. See that happen. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Very that true. was that was a question. Thank you, Harry Flynn. I. D.A. Harris here. Uh, Willie, your turn to ask you the question you selected. All right. <clears throat> this is from my good buddy, Leo the Phenom, at the Phenom 1000. He says, since SummerSlam is around the corner, what do you guys think is the best SummerSlam? Um, for me, probably SummerSlam 2002. And you have The Rock and Brock, Shawn Michaels and Triple H, which I actually just got done watching yesterday. And you had Rey Mysterio and Kurt Angle. I think that was just the perfect SummerSlam, you know, had a great main event, great, you know, I love the show, and a great opening. And I also probably, I would also probably put SummerSlam 2013 up there, too, because, you know, having my boy Danny Bryan, you know, win the WWE title for the first time against John Cena, of course, getting cashed to my Randy Orton, but also had Brock Lesnar and CM Punk. You had a pretty good card at the time, but those are my favorite two SummerSlams. What about you guys? <laughs> mm. I don't know. Mm. Mm. Well, how about this? To make it a lot easier for you, Kelsey, favorite SummerSlam, the best SummerSlam that you've seen? Hmm. Let me think. Hey, shut up. <laughs> don't want to get copyrighted, okay? Sony owns that. Oh. <laughs> Probably SummerSlam 2009. Oh, that's a good one. The, gen bad. the Generation X returned on that night, I believe. That was amazing. Yeah. I love that. I love that SummerSlam so You had much. the main event, Jeff Hardy and CM Punk, which was great. TLC match. Hell yeah. And even had a good opener with uh, Rey Mysterio and Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. Yeah, that's when Dolph mm -hmm. Ziggler was actually relevant. <laughs> wow. Damn. It was for the title that he's currently holding he's right now, as we speak. He still kind of actually is. Yeah. All right, Ryan, mm. your turn. Your turn, like, what is uh, the best SummerSlam? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I would probably have to say either SummerSlam 2016 or SummerSlam 2013, but I, if I had to choose, I'd probably have to go with 2013. I think 2013 was a little better. Mainly 2016 because they had Cena versus Styles, uh, Finn versus Rollins. Uh, we don't talk about that match. Lesnar versus Orton was a really good match. Um, <laughs> Until the end, in my opinion, the bloodbath. Yeah, which yeah. The crap out of me. But the ending was kind of really stupid. But right, you're uh, forgetting I think the most the book... important part of the pay per view. You're forgetting the most important part of the pay per view. The introduction uh, uh, of the worst walking. championship of all time. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so as I was saying, uh, I think 2016 was pretty good, but I think the booking of it was kind of a little meh, kind of really questionable. But I would probably have to go 2013. I think it was a little better. That's a really good one. As for me, um, 2004. Oh, yeah, I'll admit that one. Randy Orton, like Randy Orton uh, became the youngest world champion by defeating Chris Benoit. And yeah, to you guys listening, we're not going to make yeah, stupid Chris Benoit Chris jokes. Benoit. Yes, Benoit, 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 Benoit. Exactly. Right. Chris, Chris Benoit. Yeah, the 2004 show was really good because not only did Randy Orton like become the youngest world champ that night, but there was also other good matches like uh, Kurt Angle versus Eddie Guerrero. That was a good match. Uh, oh Kate, my God, yeah. yes. Kane and Matt Hardy's Till Death Do Us Part match. That was... Oh, that was good. Yeah. Uh, JBL versus The Undertaker for the WWE Championship was another one. It was also John Cena and Booker T in the first of a Best of Five series for the U.S. title. Those were some pretty good matches on that card. And here's the other cool thing about 2004. I think... Uh... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Christian. Y'all cool thing about 2004's event? It was in my hometown of Toronto. Yes. 
I remember that big pop that Randy Orton got when he won the title. Yeah, everyone loved Randy Orton back then. Yeah, he was really over. That is very true what, indeed. What happened? <laughs> I know, I don't know. But that's where he made history. Hey, you know, I I really think that uh, 2004 was a really good year of wrestling, in my opinion. That is true. Yeah. Um, all right, Ryan, your move and your question. Okay, so uh, the next question comes from Stop Monkey Mike. What's up, man? So Stop Monkey Mike asked, what, what was the inspiration for the Losers Browns podcast? Ooh. Um, I'll, I'll just kind of say, you know, I mainly kind of started all, you know, I mainly if there's guy mainly, and which we're doing still today, uh, but mainly Skype is really kind of almost how I found each other. Not exactly everyone, but um, mainly the majority of the group of the lounge here today. And, you know, it's just kind of a thing we started doing, like, every almost every Monday night, every Tuesday night. We watch Raw and SmackDown, and, you know, we just kind of have group conversations. And, and mainly, the, like, this came about. We started a podcast, so... The healist of Balor's has returned, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah, Willie had to take care of a situation, but that's all right. Um, Ryan was just uh, answering his question, which was the inspiration of the Losers Lounge podcast, and he was, anyways, continue on, right. Ryan. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, so yeah, basically, it just came about. Um, you know, these group of friends, like basically that <laughs> you're hearing right now, mainly through Skype. You know, every Monday night, every Tuesday night, we. Of course, watch Raw and SmackDown, and you have to watch her just kind of chill out, talk together, and, you know, do some awesome stuff on Skype. And plus, then we have a lot of yeah. 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 podcasts then we, then we formed the podcast. Mainly then because the podcast happened. Mainly because each one of us had, like, a lot of things to say about it. We're like, man, we should make this go public. We yeah. all had, like, things to say about the wrestling world, and we were like, why don't we just make this, like, a thing? Yeah, so, um... All of us, and at the time, uh, Connor was with us, too, at BCN Rollins. Shout out to you, buddy. Love you, Connor. Well, should I say future wrestler, Connor? Oh, hell yeah. Yep. Connor Riley. <laughs> the dude's yeah. training. That's what you said thinking. Kyle O'Reilly. Sure, I Texas say, wait, wait. wrestling. Anyway. Texas um, wrestling. So, basically, that's, that's... Brian basically just a answered, like, the question. I don't think any one of us are going to have a different opinion on how the Losers Lounge podcast was inspired, because... <laughs> no, really. No. I mean, yeah, it just started like that. But thanks, uh, Sock thank Monkey Mike, for, for the success. Speaking of whatever. Thanks, Sock Monkey Mike, for the question. And finally, Kelsey, what's the question you chose? My question is from Fitz at Fitz2016 Matt. He asked, if you had to pick, who would you have as Universal Champion? All right. <laughs> y'all probably, y'all probably know. Y'all probably know what I'm gonna say. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I would choose Drew McIntyre. I knew because, <laughs> because listen, Drew has been like ever since he like returned to the WWE, he's been like doing so good. Like I don't know, his first run was kind of meh, but his second run in WWE has been so good. He's been like dominating, and I feel like he would be a good Universal Champion, honestly. Oh, definitely. All right, Willie, what about you? For me, I mean, Seth. Come on, man, the most over guy in the company. You know? Oh. I think Raw, I thought you, you know, were going to say worth, Finn. He's been, no, Finn, <laughs> Finn at this point is a joke. Finn is a joke at this point. Hey, remember Finn's Funhouse? Um, yeah, what? Remember Finn's Funhouse? Yes, Finn's Funhouse. I actually visited this Funhouse yesterday. He said hello. <laughs> Anyways, um... <laughs> Yeah, Seth Rollins, I mean, you know, he's the most over guy. You know, he gets the crowd on their feet. I mean, come on, every time you hear that burn it down part, I mean, you just go all energetic. Come on, it's awesome. I love metal. And I think, so, you yeah. know, I think, you know, besides Reigns, <laughs> who is not over, by the way, you know, crowd-wise at least, um, I think Rollins could do great as Universal Champion. I think he'd be a great face of Monday Night Raw, and, you know, it's showing, you know, with what he's been doing these past few months. It, it's great. I love Seth. And I think Seth needs to be in the spot, or at least deserves to be in the spot that Roman Reigns is in. You know, oh, just as soon as Brock, just as soon as Brock Lesnar is out of the picture, you know. 
Yeah. All right. Um, my pick. If I had to pick, who would I have as Universal Champion? I only have three words. Anyone but Brock. That's it. All right. That's it for me. I don't care. Anyone but Brock. I don't care yeah. who. Hell, James Ellsworth for all I fucking care. Uh, it's a little bit of a stretch, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> but, I mean, at least he'd actually show up. And, that is very true. And, Ryan, what about you? Um, if there's one guy I would put the Universal title on, it would probably be, I would say, probably... Braun Strowman. Uh, I would probably go with Bobby Lashley, but I think Braun Strowman is deserving. <laughs> Lash, Lash God, a joke. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ryan. Lashley's a joke. Lashley's a joke. Everyone's a joke, really. Yeah. Actually, yes, everyone's a joke. Everyone's a critic. Very true. Everyone's a critic, you know. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen. Champion. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that was. Q&A time with the Losers Lounge. That took up the first, like, 15 minutes of this podcast, but that's okay. Yeah. It's like the kickoff Keep show. Keep sending those questions, ladies and gentlemen. Continue asking questions in the comments, and we'll select four questions again for the next podcast. Um, in the meantime, however, this is the main course. We're here to talk about the NXT Brooklyn Trilogy. Now, here's how things are going to work. I'm going to go through each one of the members of the Losers Lounge podcast for each one of the NXT Brooklyn shows. And they're going to select what was their favorite match, their favorite moment, and what could have or should have been happened. Oh, God, I don't remember much. That's from okay. The <laughs> last, from take I do. One. That's all right. Uh, if that's the case, I'll just get you over with then, uh, Kelsey. Uh, I'll start with you. <laughs> NXT, for at least what you remember, if there is stuff you remember. <clears throat> Who was your favorite match or moment I from? Such bad memory. I'm sorry, so y'all. It's okay. It's okay. That's why we're here, all to help you. Definitely. But do you got any favorite moment or match from the first NXT Brooklyn show? Are you asking me first? Yeah, just so, just so you, since you have uh, uh, less knowledge. I think I, my favorite match was probably Finn and Kevin. The ladder like match. Like that. That ladder match, honestly, like was so like good. On, like I wouldn't change anything about it. Like it was, ju- it was good. Honestly, I liked it. It was my favorite match. Y'all probably thought I was gonna say Sasha and Bailey, but nope. I mean, well, <laughs> the match is kind of overrated. I agree, Sasha and Bailey was good, but I just wouldn't say it was the best. I mean, people yeah. treated it like yeah. it was like I don't know, five star thing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> True. No, pretty much. Yeah. Well, right. some critic. Out there, huh? All right, let's uh, <laughs> go with Ryan from NXT, the first ever NXT TakeOver Brooklyn show. What was your favorite match slash moment or what could have happened? Um, I would definitely say my favorite match was Bailey and Sasha Banks. Um, I think it was a really good match. And not just because, uh, you know, all this five-star you know, rating, whatever it is that they get, but it was a good back-and-forth match. You know, that's what a... Title much pretty much should be like, and um, if you ask me, that's probably their best match out of their whole entire feud that they've ever had, including main roster. And I think it was just fantastic from start to finish. Yeah, what's happening on the main roster right now between it's Bailey and Sasha joke. is uh, dragging on way too long. It's Boston like connection. Don't don't ever say that name again. That is yeah. the most cringiest name in professional wrestling I've ever heard. You know, it's it's kind of funny. You think about it, right? A few weeks ago they were fighting, and we thought Bailey turned heel, right? Weeks later, you get them back together, and they're the boss and hug connection. Thanks to Doctor <laughs> Shel- Thanks to <laughs> Doctor Shelby. It's so funny. I'm sorry. Thanks like, to Doctor Shelby. Like, what the heck? Like yeah. so stupid. So Ryan, was there anything about NXT Brooklyn that you would change about the show? Um, not really, honestly. I mean, I think it was a really good takeover. All right. Um, uh, I can't, I can't really think of anything, honestly. For me, I think my favorite match was also the Finn Balor, Kevin Owens ladder match. Cause, um, when I saw that main event, there was like a lot of really cool moments, but I think one of the coolest moments had to be the coup de gras from the near the top of the ladder. Where I thought Finn died, but, you know, that guy didn't 
Yep. Yeah. Um, I always kind of get kind of scared whenever Ben like those scooters are off from if there's anything high heights. <clears throat> if there's anything I would change about the first NXT Brooklyn show, it'd be the entire existence of the Apollo Crews Ty Dillinger disaster. Yes. Yeah, that li- oh, that was God. like under five minutes. That that four minutes sucked. actually, Ryan. That match yeah. sucked so bad. Four minutes, five minutes. Wasn't Apollo Crews like a new force to be reckoned with at the time? Yeah. This is a, this is his debut match. Yeah. yeah. And he like and uh, he... Ty Dillinger wasn't even the perfect ten at the time either. No. So, uh, for and, like, me, he got called up within, like, yeah, yeah, not up even like, a year. No, he got called up, like, the year after, next year. It was in 2016 yeah, like, after yeah, WrestleMania. Yeah, pretty much six or seven months later. Yeah. yeah. All right, Willie, and what about you? I'm pretty sure you got a lot to say about the first NXT Brooklyn. Not really, I mean, I don't really remember it. The only thing I remember from this pay-per-view is the women's match and Bauer and Owens. And, of course, you know, he had Juice and Thunder Liger against Tyler Breeze, but I don't think anyone's going to remember that. <laughs> but was on one time. What's up, Ryan? Um, I forgot they had Samoa Joe and Baron Corbin. <laughs> the Vaughn Villains uh, and Blake and Murphy? Uh, yeah, the... They, they the Vaughn the Villains, yeah. Villains, yeah. Yeah, the Vaughn Villains won blue, the match. Like, really. they, had, uh, they had blue pants. I don't know if anybody remembers her. Yeah, I do. But they had blue pants in her corner. Ba-da-da-da, ba-da-da-da. The Price is I, Right no, theme? I can't believe remember that. <laughs> that was the Price is Right th- theme. Good lord, copyright. Thanks. <laughs> it was just her entrance was just some guy yeah, humming the pr- prices right there. Uh, like, what the fuck? Yeah, um, my favorite match, Balor and Owens. Um, I think the the only thing I would probably change about the pay per view, I would take off. I would have taken off Apollo Cruz against Ty Dillinger. I think you could have debuted Apollo against a different opponent, and you, and of course, Juice and Thunder Liger against Tyler Breeze. I mean. Why would you have Tyler Breeze involved? I know Tyler Breeze was like a big deal back then in 2015, but like against Jushin Thunder Liger, a legend in in Japan, um, I would have changed that and gave him somebody else. Other than that, the the card was good, the matches were all right, and that's my thoughts. Oh, and Bailey and Sasha Banks was overrated. I'm sorry, that, that's, that's all right. I got to say about that. That's all right, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on to the next one, NXT Brooklyn Two, which has the logo of what looks like a gangster chain or something with a number two on it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. He's not lying, folks. That's what the oh logo looked God. like, anyway. Uh, <laughs> let's try this again. Uh, Kels, once again, I'll start with you. What was your favorite match slash moment from Brooklyn Two in 2016? Oh, snap! There eight matches. Good lord! Holy shoot! There's like there was two pre show matches. Uh, no. Eight matches. Eight in matches. All. In all. Hold on. Hold Good on. Lord. Sorry, I'm trying to. Look at the matches to rem- so I right. like remember. If that's like, the case, well, if that's the case, I'll come back to you then. Okay. You want me to go, Christian? Wait, 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 wait! No, 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 no! Actually, no. Okay. 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 Stop. okay. Whoa. Good lord. <laughs> okay. Good lord. Good geez. It's okay. Anyways. Your friend do what she says. Match. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Was probably Bobby and Andrade. Oh, it was Bobby Roode? Well, back when Andrade was terrible. Back when, yeah, Bobby, he was a jobber. back when Andrade was terrible and Bobby Roode used to be glorious. Yeah, Bobby, no, Bobby Roode sucks. So, Bobby was so good as a heel. Back when Bobby was over. Why oh, he's over they... now. No, he's not. Anyways, continue, Kelsey. But yeah, Bobby and Andrade, I just, I don't know. I just love Bobby Roode and, you know, he's so good. I just I'm done he... with Bobby Roode as of late. Ugh. <sighs> yeah. It may have They've been, killed him. It may have been only a ten minute match, but even ten minutes is a good thing. Like if it's all good from start to finish. Yeah. All right. Can I go next? Yeah, sure, uh Willie, you're up next. Alright. Oh man. Um jeez, look at this card here. Oh, ooh. My favorite match. I think this is gonna be everyone's favorite match, actually. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. The revival against DIY. That match. Oh! was amazing oh my god i hate myself that match was so <laughs> good i hate myself I oh you had the, oh you had the nakamura samoa Joe match that was great and all but diy and revival the robbery they had back oh. then i'm changing my answer no no i'm changing my answer, <laughs> changing my answer to... <laughs> okay okay everybody take it easy she can change her answer if she wants to yeah it's okay yeah it's all right 
Uh, Ember Moon against Billy Kay. I mean, meh. Was that also guess, Ember Moon's uh, debut or something? Yeah, this was Ember yeah. Moon's debut. So it was the debut Austin of Ember Moon. Aries against No Way Jose. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Authors of Pain against TM61 I don't, I don't or, or The remember, Mighty. I don't, I don't remember Austin versus No Way Jose. I that was, don't that was the kick out of the show. I don't remember Austin's WWE. Kind of, <laughs> it was kind of uh, forgettable. Oh, shit. <clears throat> <laughs> Anyways, is there anything you would change about Brooklyn too? No, no, I would have kept it all the same. Such a good show. I'm gonna go back and watch it after this. Hmm. I like giving nail inspirations. Ryan, what about you for NXT Brooklyn too? I I actually remember watching this. Uh, I thought it was a really good card, to be honest. Uh, so my favorite match out uh, of Takeover Brooklyn two would have to be. Ty Dillinger and Wesley Blake. First of all, that was uh, not uh, even televised. I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was taped for a future episode of NXT, actually. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, so, in reality, uh, my favorite was Shinsuke Nakamura and Samoa Joe for the NXT title. Uh, I think that was really good. I actually really enjoyed the rivalry that Nakamura and Joe had uh, during <laughs> NXT. I mean, I think it was really good. Joe was like a dominant heel. Relevant. I mean, no, Joe was like a dominant over. heel. And Joe was a fantastic was like an over. He was an over baby face. And like, Ooh, he, yeah. he was amazing as baby face. Um, but yeah, I just really loved it. The match was good. Mm. Even, uh, I think it was TakeOver Toronto. Yeah. yeah I think if I'm, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was another Joe good won, match. Joe won the title back at that one, which shocked yeah. me. Kellen held it for two weeks, though, so it doesn't really matter. True. So, um, <clears throat> is there anything about Takeover Brooklyn 2 that you would change, Ryan? Uh, I mean, uh, not really. I mean, I think everything was pretty good. I mean, I wouldn't really change anything. We usually Takeover is like nothing. I really have no complaints over usually. And ladies and gentlemen, to those listening to the podcast, if normally you hear somebody say, I wouldn't change anything about it, that just proves that you did something good with the show. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't change nah. anything. When it comes either. to the main roster pay-per-views, we'd have a lot of things we'd probably change. Oh, yeah. That's oh, a lot of things. We'd, we'd be only here for a few things. hours, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Because, oh, like, I, 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 I have to think about the main roster. For real. We'd, I be talk, we'd be talking for two weeks, actually. I could do that. <laughs> I, I could do that. <laughs> um, as would, for me, I would die. I'm sorry, I could not talk to y'all that long. I would die. I know she could barely talk to she could barely talk to y'all for half an hour. Which, wow. by the way, we have almost done. Um, as for me, um, my favorite match oh, oh, in NXT. Oh, 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 before, uh, sorry. Oh yeah, Christian. so go ahead. Um, um, ladies and gentlemen, so probably you will probably hear us complain about SummerSlam 2018 because you know for a fact something's gonna go wrong. I guarantee you. Ooh, that's your money. <laughs> Just by listening to oh, Willie. Oh, you, you y'all better stay tuned for the next podcast. Yeah, sadly Ooh. we, sadly, Ooh. to those who really love watch listening to Willie's rant, sadly you won't be hearing a rant today. But oh, tune in next well, week maybe, and potentially maybe, the week after. Maybe at the end of this podcast episode, because we might talk about some uh, hate comments and so. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. Why not? Oh, yeah. Why not? Some hate comments. Y'all got something to say? Yeah, y'all got something to say about us, huh? Uh-huh. First of all, uh, is our mic we'll get to good? that. We'll get to that. Okay, first yeah. of all, this is kind of impromptu, ladies and gentlemen. I have no idea what you're talking about. Back on track. For me, um, <laughs> my favorite match at TakeOver Brooklyn 2 is either Nakamura versus Joe or Revival versus DIY. Even though um, I actually liked uh, Revival and DIY at NXT Toronto. That match was amazing. It was two out of three falls, and like, I was there live. To, I was there to witness it live. It was great. But I would say, like, yeah, it's a tie between Shinsuke versus Samoa Joe and Revival versus DIY. For my case, if there's anything I'd change, actually, there is something I kind of would change, and that was uh, the existence of Austin Aries versus No Way Jose, because hardly anybody remembers that, and neither of those guys are even relevant with WWE anymore. I think you mean the existence of Austin Aries in WWE, period. Oh, we got... Oh, my God. It's yep. so sad. Oh, God. I, I, they, ruined, they ruined him. 
Thank uh, God he managed. I'm so excited when he finally did, showed up. They, hey, they didn't let him win the Cruiserweight Championship. I know. But they let Enzo win it. I was Enzo like. freaking <laughs> sorry, but. I was Whoa, like. Wow. Okay. Like, seriously. Oh. Anyways, can we get to my favorite takeover? Yes, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. We already, we already know your favorite. Ladies and gentlemen, the <laughs> next one and the final one that we're talking about on this podcast, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3. Yes. Oh, How about this? We'll get to Willie last in this case because I'm oh, pretty yes. sure he has a lot to say. Oh, yes. This, oh, man. I'll start with Kelsey. Kelsey, what was your favorite match from Brooklyn 3? <laughs> Uh, Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Roode. Probably because Drew McIntyre won the NXT title. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then, well, yeah, obviously, because Drew is my man. But the, oh, what happened afterwards was even Then my more man awesome. came in. The, the debut but, of the Undisputed Era. No, 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 Christian. <laughs> You're oh, wait, we got me. <laughs> Don't worry. Anyways, go right ahead. Go right, go right ahead. I'll get yeah. my chance. Come on, there, guys. My, my favorite <laughs> match was obviously Drew and Bob, Drew and Bobby, because Drew finally won the NXT Championship, and that was like the best day of my life. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Their match was really good. Some really good spots, and yeah. Did you realize Alistair Black was booked for the show? I know, but he. Yeah. Um. Who, who, who did he face? Let me see. He faced the day with Tommy. The day with Tommy. That match was physical. That was good. It was blood but anyway, Good Lord. I liked it. Um, is there anything you'd change about Brooklyn Three, Kels? Hmm. Mm, no, not really. Honestly. There we the, go. I thought the, I thought all the matches were pretty good. There was like honestly, I didn't think any of the matches were bad. They were, you know. Thank God for that. I, I would. I um, would not change anything. Let's see. For my case. Um, my favorite match at NXT Brooklyn 3, um, was probably Andrade Cien Almas versus Johnny Gargano. I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Because, here's the thing. I, I cannot compare this to their epic encounter at Philadelphia a few months later. No. Because, but, because that match, my opinion, was the best match of 2018 so far. Yeah. But, um, what they did at Brooklyn 3 to kick off the show, too... Was, it was great. It was epic. Um, and yeah. finally, it was the start of Andrade Almas not being a jobber. Because seriously, he was always, he was <laughs> at, the, at the takeover shows, he was always jobbing to either debuting wrestlers or people who just got out of being a team or something. True. But my favorite moment was the moment Aleister Black actually had Code Orange and Incendiary perform his entrance live. That was so sick. Yeah. That was... I love that. Because you know me, I'm a fan of metal music. And especially, I liked the opening of the show when they had a live performance to kick it off. That kind of confused me. I was like, wait, what is this? Code Orange performing, hey. like, rather than just going through, like, a usual video package where they're, like, hyping I know, up right? matches. I figured like, that was the best way to do it. Because, you know, you're hyped up with music to kick, get you pumped up, ready to go for this epic show. Yeah. And also, I liked Oscar vs. Ember Moon. That was a good match. That match is yeah. so good. Whew. Um, if there's anything I'd change about it, um, actually, I don't have anything. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. All right, Ryan, what about you? Uh, um, I would probably have to say it's really a tie between Drew McIntyre and Bobby Roode and Alistair Black and Hideo and Tommy, but I would probably go with Alistair Black and Hideo and Tommy, I think that was a very incredible match. And mainly because uh, um, Alistair Black uh, had a actual, like, live, you know, live his own... performance, live entrance. Music. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. And he actually uh, broke the, he actually broke a curse, which was those who have live entrances tend to lose, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think it was a good uh, back-and-forth match. Especially like in the very beginning, uh, I think when the match first started, they both like kicked each other, like both of them kicked each other at the same time. I think it happened like two or three times. Like that was just awesome right away. 
Really good times. Is there anything you would change about Brooklyn 3? Uh, no, not really, but I would probably... Uh, I would probably say if I had to change anything, I would have probably... I honestly... It, it's like a debate, but I would have probably had Ember Moon win the title. The NXT Women's title. Yeah. But I would not be the way. She did. It. She did eventually at War Games the f- the next takeover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what you're saying is she should have defeated Asuka. <coughs> yeah. I understand that. Um, and finally, yeah. Willie. He, the heelist of Ballers is about to say what he thinks about Brooklyn Three. Takeover Brooklyn Three. Oh my gosh. I mean, Kelsey did say this was my favorite takeover of all time. Not really. My favorite takeover is actually Takeover New Orleans. Yeah, that, we that was had good, Matt. In April on my birthday. But that was so this good. takeover, oh my gosh. I mean, this was this was where it all began with Undisputed Era, baby. Um my favorite Shock. match, probably so Black and Hideo Tommy. I thought that match was pretty good. And Gargano and um <clears throat> almost was pretty good too. Um what I would have changed about the event, as Ryan said, I would have changed Ember Moon winning the title. I also would have changed how Undisputed Era debuted. I mean, I really didn't like how Red Dragon interfered in the tag team match at the very end. I thought, yeah, it, did, it made them seem like a dominating force. It was pretty cool, you know, me marking out to, you know, chasing the dragon. I'm like, oh, my God, they're, they're finally fucking here. <laughs> um, but... Um, I kind of would have like had undisputed debut as like Nexus style, or, like Shield style at the very end, but other than that, it was a really good event. I got what I wanted. I mean, in the end, with Adam Cole coming in, attacking Drew McIntyre, I was like, oh my god, it was just a perfect way to end takeover. I remember, I remember taking a uh, selfie, like at the very end of the show with undisputed uh, standing tall over Drew McIntyre. I'm like, just yeah, just they in made tears it. Of they made it. They made it act like he was gonna go after I the know. title right away but he didn't he didn't do no I, I think if drew didn't get hurt i think he would have been you know going after drew but you know whatever andrade stepped in and defeated him which was cool yeah but yeah um, undisputed made that show for me that was just an amazing show you know what i also mm-hmm. liked about that show what it was right after drew won the title they showed that uh they showed that logo on the corner that usually signals the end of the show it makes you think it's yeah. over yeah, I've never on skype on that night and kelsey's like well the show's over and i'm like no there's not where's adam cole <laughs> she's like he's not coming i'm like all right whatever i'm about to turn off the show well, and know, then 12 I seconds mean, later there I, he is i was yeah. like i was like yeah he's not gonna show up and then I look, okay i look at the crowd they're all pointing and cheering i'm like oh my god he's freaking here <laughs> runs in the ring attacks drew and then lays him out and you know here i am just going insane i'm like my boys are here and i'm, I'm so happy i'm so happy they're here and yeah just a great takeover overall yeah, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, that was us. Good show. That was us discussing the Takeover Brooklyn trilogy, and yeah, this is only like forty minutes, but that's okay. That's all right though, because we didn't. Have, there's not really much to say since it's only been three. Nah, uh, of course we got yeah, the fourth one coming up. Yeah, we got number four coming up, and that looks to maybe potentially like surpass three in terms of a great match card. But we'll the the, lo- the lounge will get to that um, next week. When they give out the predictions to NXT Brooklyn 4 and SummerSlam 2018. Oh, uh, yeah, SummerSlam. Meh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. Yeah, well, it's, 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 one it's, the, it's the summer. That's like, the, it's like just how it is. Just try and pretend to have fun. That is very true. I put on a fake smile for pro wrestling nowadays. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we also want to once again thank you to those who have submitted their oh, questions. Good, 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 good. Aren't we supposed to be reading hate comments first? I wouldn't really know about that. That was not in the original plan. That is true. Yeah, you guys just threw that on me all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I might consider looking around at some hate comments for you guys to read potentially next week. Oh, yeah. I swear. I just can't wait to see the ones about Cal T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see them either. You can't wait to blow up again? Kelsey likes to bury the head. I think. Remember uh, when I went off that one time? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Kelsey needs to work on her mic skills. Well, like, excuse you. I'm not a wrestler. I'm not gonna be perfect on the mic. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, I think there was. Um, I think the last podcast we did, somebody I saw someone in the comment section. He wrote, uh, 
you're boring or something like that. Yeah, he said y'all are boring because I believe it was just no. Ryan and Willie. What, what you watching for, Hannah? Oh. Yeah, he said he spelled it. Yeah, you're boring. Like that's how he spelled it. You're boring. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> haters are going to hate. <laughs> why you watching, son? Oh Anyways, <laughs> actually, actually, in some ways, I'm. They got you guys got a good point, actually. Yeah, people have been, like there have been times like I think the reasoning for that was because the last podcast was um just Ryan and Willie. I mean, yeah. we can't help that. People found us entertaining for an hour. Yeah. Mostly. And if y'all don't find us entertaining, that's on y'all. If you don't find us entertaining, then don't watch. If you don't period. like us, don't watch us. We are here if to you... entertain the people who we're want to be per- entertained. We're not, we're not perfect. We're not going to be good on the mic. like. We're, we're here, here to predict, talk, and criticize professional wrestling. If you don't want to hear any of that, then you're in the wrong podcast. As a matter of fact, you it's matter of the if way I see like. it, um, yeah, the way I see it and everything, like, <clears throat> we're not, we even admit, we're not critics here, we're fans. Yeah, yeah. We show we favoritism. Fans. We show favoritism. And we're not going to sugarcoat anything. We're not going to bow down to the WWE, all right? Oh, quit watching. Why are you watching? Because we're fans, but we're going to criticize the product. Bingo, right? what's his name o? And if y'all don't like it, get out. Don't watch my podcast. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of these stupid people out there telling me this stuff. Jesus. If you don't like it, then get your ass out of here. Get the hell out of here. Oh, damn. All right. Oh, here's listen yeah, to this well, comment right here. This is <laughs> this was three weeks ago. Like this is on the podcast where it's just so, Ryan. Oh, I'm looking at the comments right now, actually. Here's a good one. It wait. says I just started what? Wait. 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 Okay, what? no. Sorry. <clears throat> I just started listening to your podcast, and I like it so far, but a big problem is the volume. Some people on the podcast are hard to listen to. Well, guys, actually, I just got near earbuds last week, so write down in the comments below if you think the new volume, or at least the audio level on my earbuds are good. You know? um, oh, my God. And then, and then here's a funny one right here. Someone says, where's the miracle guy himself? Apparently. He can't be on every episode, Okay. Even okay. if it's on, even if it's on my channel, I'm just saying I got a lot of stuff I got to do. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to be on next week's podcast because I'm going to be on vacation in Vancouver visiting my parents. But don't worry, folks. We'll Christian, have a very Christian, special you, guest. Which comment? Which comment were you going to read? Well, this is actually not a hate comment. This is actually from a uh, username oh. Killjoy. But this is all oh, back on the back, back on the Exile series was going on. It says, "Hey, Miracle, have you patched things up with Long Neck Josh yet?" Because you know, at the time, since the, since the series is no longer happening, okay. Since the series is no longer happening, I I can easily just say, oh, um, yeah, we're we're good. <laughs> but, um, but he's a real cool guy. He's a real cool guy. I yeah. like that guy. Oh, yeah. that reminds me. Uh, you guys may or may not. We don't know yet. See Long Neck Josh on next week's podcast as a guest. Maybe. Because it kind of depends on it what all does. depends on what he's doing and everything like that. But uh, if he does, it just if he does, it just goes to show that we're actually gonna think about having guests on, which means there could be future guests. And no, ladies and gentlemen, he's not honorary member of the Losers Lounge. He's Hell just uh, our friend. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. <laughs> all right. But ladies and gentlemen, that was the Losers Lounge podcast where we discussed the NXT Brooklyn trilogy. Uh, go down to the comments, ladies Brooklyn, and gentlemen, and. Um, <laughs> Crime time. <laughs> Good Lord. Crime time. Now. Dang it, Kelsey. Now I gotta go listen to Crime Time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. What if Crime Time returned at Brooklyn 4? Yo, 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 yo. Bro- <laughs> I would die of laughter. I would Brooklyn. die of laughter. No, they come out, that, like the street prop is issue an open challenge and it's Crime Time. <laughs> 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 Oh my god, Kelsey! Oh my god. I would die! I would die! I think I made him lose day right there. <laughs> I ain't joking. You hear silence, you hear silence, and then you hear yo, 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 yo. Oh, I'll pop a 40. Uh, I'll pop a 40, all right. Damn right. <laughs> all right, seriously. I have a mark out. I'm Prime sorry, time to show up. Sorry for interrupting you. I didn't mean to. <laughs> it's all good. Um, Y'all want to ask anything else? Y'all got anything to add? No, but I think we're good. I mean, we'll be back next week. 
Well, we're predicting SummerSlam, and you will be getting the heel list of Balor's next week, because I got lots to discuss. And the Reister of Ryan's, and the flarest of sections. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, repeat that again? The Reisters of Ryan's and the flarest of sections. <laughs> the flarest of sections. <laughs> the flarest of sections. <laughs> that doesn't... Okay, okay. That 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 kind of sounds a little bit wrong. I mean, nah, keep it. The flarest of sections, you got the longest of necks, you got the heel of the Bowers. <laughs> longest of necks may or may not be on next week's podcast. We'll see about that. Depends on what he's doing, so um, that's Bar- why we're not putting Bar- in any confirmations here. No, the center of sins, you know? The miracles of miracle. No, that's bland. The Christians of miracles? What? The Christians of... Okay, now we're getting into religion. (laughs) No, the miracles of miracle. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Okay, we don't even know what we're saying anymore. Ladies and gentlemen... Uh, yeah. Thank you for joining us. Um, put in that. questions below if you want us to be uh, answering your questions in a future edition of the podcast. And <laughs> for you. now, definitely. And for we now, enjoy take we care, enjoy. everybody. And every first of all, thank you guys for being here. We love you. And th- uh, celebrate once again, ladies and gentlemen, for podcast number ten. Yay! Woo! We're the perfect ten. We're the best podcast in the world. Okay, not really. And there will be Whatever. more editions in the future. So for now. Good night, everyone.